America prepares. All America alters its pattern of life and work to meet the demand for protection. Industry is a double step to supply the sinews of safety, the armaments of war that an embattled world must have if democracy is to survive. Mechanical genius joins with the muscle of millions of men working to win for the ways of freedom, freedom to think, to speak, to rise, live, and plan with one's fellow man. America's vast resources are harnessed to the job of being the world arsenal for this and other democracies. Its present-day production of armaments is but a mere fraction of the great job that lies ahead. The flow of production in plant and shipyard gains speed. Vessels of all types, carriers, merchantmen, submarines, slip off the ways in growing numbers. And the beat of feet sounds over the land. Feet intent on training, on growing fit for whatever destiny holds ahead. Heroes, every one. Heroes by the million. Men who abandon home and vocations that they may be ready to defend democracy if necessary. Sturdy of body, firm in spirit. Seamen, Marines, soldiers, and flyers. A huge civilian army joins in this great defense program. Rigid rough work, this training. Actual combat is simulated, conditions met and mastered. No problem that may arise will find these men wanting. Men like these are not to be stopped. No individual, no evasive words or deeds, no group action or selfish interests will be allowed to impede their growing strength, effectiveness, and safety. For it is they who are sacrificing every advantage of civilian life. They who hold the torch of freedom closest. Every division of the Army, Navy, and Marine Corps is rapidly instructed in the modern methods of defense and offense. All America is behind these armaments, supplying an uninterrupted flow of materials for machines of mechanized might. America is making many tanks. Americans are rapidly learning their use. A rough branch of the service, making all the more necessary the intensive training of the day for total preparation against any threat to freedom. In less than a year, miracles are wrought in the production of tanks, rolling fortresses geared to demolish anything in their paths, conquering all obstacles on every nature of terrain. Americans must know their every phase for defense and self-protection. Quick spanning of streams with portable bridges for the advance of lumbering, powerful tank corps. Forerunner of the infantry, successor to the cavalry, as wars are conducted today. Scout cars are a new development. More are needed, more will be supplied. guard at the Panama Canal, Uncle Sam's vital water lifeline, joining the two great oceans of the world. Protection of this most important artery rests with many divisions. It's Air Force, searching eyes that look down from the sky, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Soldiers, sailors, and Marines are trained especially to guard this long, thin link, permitting quick disposition of naval units from one ocean to the other allowing supply and merchant ships safe passage for their cargoes of war or peacetime. Alert is America's coast defense. Now it takes on new importance.
thousands of anti-aircraft guns, and thousands more in production. America's coasts must be invulnerable. America's army takes to the air, while more and more bombers roll off the assembly lines at high-powered factories, growing air armadas stand ready, guided by pilots second to none. Men training with bombers, with fighters, with pursuit planes, intrepid men learning every formation, learning to keep the air above America free. Long before any foreign nation utilized parachute jumping as a practical form of warfare, Uncle Sam's Air Force had perfected this means of offense and of defense. First the equipment of guns and accessories are thrown safely to the earth. Then the men pile out. There's a whirlwind descent, then a tug as the parachute opens to glide the men to safety. Now the slow motion camera analyzes the jumps. For perfect form, the parachutist is expected to land standing on his two feet. The United States Navy's newest triple threat it's Mosquito Torpedo Squadron, mile-a-minute craft designed for harbor protection, coast patrol, and hit-and-run attacks. Each manned by a picked crew of nine, they carry four torpedoes and twin machine guns. Before the skyline of New York City, they paint a threatening picture to those who would dare attempt invasion of our shores and of our liberty. But the fleet is the total hitting might of the United States Navy. Gigantic floating fortresses designed to carry massive guns and deliver their unharnessed fire in defense of the nation's shores. America's call to arms directs a two-ocean navy of heavy cruisers, destroyers, submarines, and planes. Planes ever growing in effectiveness to find the enemy, bomb him, chase his planes from the air, and observe the fire of their own battleships. The Navy Sky Warship spreads its wings. A huge 30-ton super bomber, a four-engined monster, fast and formidable. More destroyers are on the way to make the two-ocean Navy a reality. Uncle Sam's submarine squadron, six million dollar craft that hail a three billion dollar program, which delivers a new fighting ship every 12 days. Eyes under the sea, eyes for defense. <laughs> Through America's big guns, the nation roars, on guard. On guard to the end that Uncle Sam's manpower in industry, manpower in action, shall continue to answer America's call to arms.